someone in the service of window. As I most now want to go to her then, someone is the professor, Professor Dr. S.K. Abdul Hatta, sir. As Amadeza uh, Chronic Zestlessness, a report after class even. Amra for a three classes to the other three. That Amra soon put the party. Salam alaikum and very good evening to everybody. Uh, <coughs> Amadeus. Academic activities, the institutional academic activities, a corona period, on a Bathoche, Genesis Online University Pokotike, J online class at Babostana, which said, Eti Amarman Hayam of the Shikhati, the Jinaki Boro Shujok, a Shujok Jate Shabai Shab Babar Kotepare, Shedene Amadej Jere Shikhabuka Shati Jolita Centaro. অনেকে জড়িত হয়েছে আমার মনে হয় এটি সবারই কাজে আসবে তো সেই হিসাবে জেনেসিস অনলাইন ইউনিভার্সিটি আমাকে এই কাজে যুক্ত হওয়ার সুযোগ দিয়েছে ও আমি তাদের কাছে কৃতজ্ঞতা প্রকাশ করছি আর আজকে এই ক্লাসে যারা যুক্ত হয়েছে তারা যদি কিছুটা উপকৃত হতে পারেন তাহলে আমি নিজেকে আমার এই পরিশ্রম সার্থক বলে করব আমরা আজকে আমরা আলাপ করব uh, chronic breathlessness विषय तो विषय के हम रचिक theoretical aspect theoretical discussion में भी तो शुमार बोलते ना रहे थे अभी विषय के शायद ये थे वाले हम रा chronic breathlessness से कोनो क्वेश्चन जब दिखाए ताहुले हम रा किस भावे आगे बो ताज history physical examination investigation इस तरीके हम रा long case जब भावे Proceed for the key, shave have it. I mean, be sure to present for the chest. I could. So, I'm going to show you the code. I'm going to show The case of chronic bedlessness. When we encountered a patient first for the first few minutes is very important. In the first minute, at the very first sight of the patient, the evaluation of the patient starts. And after that, first sight, greetings is the first step to greet the patient. Then to, to introduce self, introduction of the self to the patient. And after that, the history proper starts by beginning of part, uh, particulars of the patient who you all know. The format of particular of the patients, I'm not going to discuss in details, but uh, the particulars of the patient is all important. Some parts of the particulars are important for the specific disease conditions. In our case of chronic bedlessness, is like occupation, these are important for our condition. The first step, we have to allow the patient to talk spontaneously and uninterruptedly for three minutes. And sometimes the patient himself states his conditions nicely, sometimes with very important clues to the diagnosis. If the chief complaint is breathlessness, breathlessness is the subjective sensation of breathing discomfort. Sometimes 
patient may have respiratory difficulties, but without having this bad sensation of body discomfort. That should be kept in mind. Our topics, chronic breathlessness. It means breathlessness persisting for more than one month. We know there are a lot of causes of acute breathlessness and the acute breathlessness need a separate approach. We are going to talk about chronic breathlessness where the breathlessness persists for more than one month. When the patient complains, when we record the chief complaint from the patient, you know there may be some other associated complaint as well. It is our duty to select which of the complaints should be considered as chief complaint. And chief complaint should be arranged in a chronological order from longer duration to shorter duration or in the reverse. But there should be a chronological order. And from that, chief complaint, from the very beginning of the chief complaint, we have to make a list of differential diagnosis. And according to this differential diagnosis, we should proceed further. So to make a differential diagnosis from the chief complaint, we must have some background knowledge about the cause of the chief complaint. Chronic breathlessness, it is uh, found that in 85% of all cases, the causes are mainly cardiorespiratory. Among them, respiratory causes, among the respiratory causes, bronchial asthma, COPD, interstitial lung disease, pneumonia, pulmonary tuberculosis, these are the common defined under ventilation. Among the cardiac cause, congestive heart failure with ischemic heart disease or valvular heart disease, these are the main cardiac conditions causing chronic breathlessness. In a few cases, psychogenic cause is also important. And among these 85% of cases, this cardio respiratory causes dominate the conditions. In 30% of cases, the cause may be multifactorial, that is both respiratory and cardiac or other component. But for this complaint, it is important to note that in 66% of cases, only the clinical presentation alone is adequate to make a diagnosis. And from the chief complaint history and physical findings, the diagnosis is obvious in these cases. And so the clinical uh, evaluation is restricted to few conditions. But in other conditions, when from the history or physical findings, the diagnosis is not obvious. In that case, we have to take details history, meticulous physical examination, and relevant investigations to make a particular diagnosis. This is an exhaustive list of causes of chronic dyspnea or chronic breathlessness. Among these, the previously mentioned common conditions are there, but besides that, some other conditions when the diagnosis is not obvious, in that case, we should consider the 
other condition like head descent attack induced or other causes of interstitial lung disease or restrictive lung disease like typhus scoliosis rural effusion is common in our country and it should be considered in our differential diagnosis pneumothorax usually doesn't cause chronic uh, breathlessness but sometimes it precipitates acute breathlessness in chronic condition vascular chronic pulmonary emboli or idiopathic pulmonary hypertension is not very uncommon that should be considered also when the cause is not obvious from the history and physical findings these are the cardiac conditions among these cardiac conditions coronary ischemia and cardiomyopathy mainly due to ischemic uh, heart disease is one important cause otherwise arrhythmia like atrial fibrillation sickness and drama the bradycardia sometimes restrictive conditions like chronic constrictive pericarditis or pericardial diffusion sometimes valvular heart disease these are also should be in consideration as the differential diagnosis valvular heart disease once it was very common but nowadays due to antibiotic proper antibiotic use you know rheumatic fever prevalence of rheumatic fever is much reduced and the complication of rheumatic fever with valvular heart disease is also less severe now here but aortic prognosis insufficiency this may develop due to some other reason and this should be considered in our differential diagnosis gastro intestinal conditions gastroesophageal reflux disease respiration is sometimes important for exacerbation of bronchial asthma or COPD or sometimes it may be confused with bronchial asthma or COPD other conditions like neuromuscular conditions it may be due to motor neuron disease or muscular dystrophy chronic narcolepsy or metabolic causes like acidosis in undetected ckd or diabetic ketoacidosis may be a cause of these are other conditions that should be considered also if the common conditions are excluded severe anemia due to iron deficiency or hemolysis may be a cause of dyspnea deconditioning or obesity sedentary like so deconditioning means when a patient become uh, physically less active or prolonged bedridden conditions may be a reason for poor health and that may be a reason of breathing difficulty pleural base tumor or any uh, pleural uh, deep fractures others may uh, give rise to breathlessness psychological and functional conditions should be considered when all other organic causes are excluded but that is a substantial group of patients uh, present with dyspnea due to psychological reason also that should be kept in mind from the chief complaint we will among this exhaustive list of differential diagnoses we should select some of the conditions for the particular patient uh, as we have seen in our uh, slide the conditions which are more common more common condition should be considered first and if we could not find any history or physical findings in favor of our common diagnosis in that case we condition. will go for our uncommon condition now after chief complaint and uh, <clears throat> uh, making a list of differential diagnosis on the basis of uh, chief complaint we will go for history of present illness history of present illness what is the objective of this history of present illness we know history of present illness 
main objective is to explain and elaborate the chief complaint of patient. And if there is other symptoms, then that should also be elaborated. In some cases, we have to ask few relevant questions for their presence or absence. Absence of any symptom, relevant symptom, is also important. Our objective, Amraje, the question will be proposed to find out the point in favor of or against the provisional or differential diagnosis. And to find out any complication of our provisional diagnosis. We have not yet made our provisional diagnosis, but we have a differential diagnosis with, with one possible diagnosis, which is more likely. We keeping this more likely diagnosis and other differential diagnosis in mind, we should try to collect data in favor of or against our diagnosis. If the diagnosis chief complaint is necessary, then we all know elaboration of symptom is, uh, it includes the onset of symptom, duration of symptom, nature of the breathlessness, progression of the breathlessness, variability, like diurnal or seasonal variation, presence of orthopnea, paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea, or recombinant, uh, recombinant dyspnea, these are important. Why these are important? Easily. If we consider bronchial asthma, the onset may be seven years, five years, or 10 years back. And during these 10 years, the patient may have episodic attack of breathlessness with symptom free period in between. But there may be some exacerbation of attack, usually bronchial, in case of bronchial asthma, there is a seasonal variation. The attack is more common in summer or in rainy season. In case of COPD or chronic bronchitis, usually there is winter exacerbation. And as you, we have said, in case of bronchial asthma, this is episodic in nature, in between attack, it is a symptom free. But in case of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, the breathlessness is progressive in nature, and patient is not symptom free. There may be exacerbation, lack of exacerbation, but patient is not totally symptom free in between attack. Nature of breathlessness is also important. In case of bronchial asthma, the nature is there is uh, usually there is tightness of the chest, sensation of tightness of the chest. In case of uh, COPD or COPD, there is a feeling of increased uh, workload during breathing. In case of uh, congestive cardiac failure, cardiac failure, but just not with cardiac failure, there is a feeling of suffocation. If the patient can uh, explain, we may ask for the nature of breathlessness. Severity and trigger and relief factors. We know the bronchial asthma, in bronchial asthma, there is hyperreactive airway and the acute symptoms may be triggered by many factors like allergens, dust, an animal dander, house dust, might even cold wind. And it, usually it is filled by bronchodilators. But if there is the cause of breathlessness is uh, due to 
interstitial lung disease or congestive cardiac failure usually these triggered factors are not active and bronchodilators is not effective to relieve the symptom variability of severity in bronchial asthma there may be diurnal variation patient may be more breathless in the morning but after that patient feels better and again to recur the symptom at the late night seasonal variation we have already said since the diurnal variation is not marked in other condition orthopnea orthopnea is breathlessness and lying to fine this is a feature more commonly due to cardiac failure when this is cardiac failure secondary to late heart failure but sometimes diaphragmatic weakness or muscular paralysis may also produce the symptom paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea this is a very characteristic of acute left ventricular failure due to maybe due to ischemic heart disease or hypertensive heart failure or valvular heart disease paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea you know the patient feels breathlessness breathless at uh, late night patient is awakened and patient goes near to window and after uh, taking few minutes breath in open window he feels better this characteristic symptom of paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea is if present it indicates it suggests acute left ventricular failure due to underlying cause recumbent dyspnea recumbent dyspnea or postprandial dyspnea that is after meal when the patient lies down patient feels this thing and this is a feature of gastroesophageal reflux disease so after elaboration of breathlessness we may have some suggestion about the diagnosis from our list of differential diagnoses after elaboration of the symptom of breathlessness we look for other associated symptoms associated symptom wheezing that is the uh, noisy breathing wheezing is more common in bronchial asthma but it may be present in copd or cardiac failure to some extent cough cough is an important symptom and usually in bronchial asthma there may be some dry cough but if the cough is a prominent symptom with productive putum that may persist for more than 2 to 3 months and with uh, a month and for consecutive to more than consecutive 2 years that is suggestive of chronic bronchitis so if there is cough we have to we will take a detailed history about the cough the duration of cough about production of sputum and so on sputum sputum uh, if there is production of sputum the volume of sputum color of sputum if there is any foul smell this thing should be asked clearly we know in case of chronic bronchitis the sputum is usually required if it is prolonged there is bacterial infection in case of bronchiectasis which may give rise to breathlessness sometimes there is a profuse volume of sputum sometimes it is also infected in case of lung abscess that may be a reason of breathlessness chronic breathlessness there is also foul smell in sputum of considerable amount presence of fever in case of bronchial asthma congestive cardiac failure or chronic bronchitis fever is not usual phenomenon 
But if there is infective exacerbation, there may be fever. But if fever is also a common symptom or a part of chief complaint, we'll consider the other conditions causing fever, infective or inflammatory conditions like pneumonia or underlying connective, connective tissue disease or malignancy and so on. So fever, if present, we have to consider the inflammatory and infective conditions in our differential diagnosis. If the history of the assessment suggests it is bronchial asthma or COPD, in that case, if there is a suspected fever, the reasons may be infective exacerbation of those chronic conditions. Chest pain, if present, it is a very important symptom. Chest pain may indicate cardiac disease, it may indicate pleuritic or chest wall disease. If the cause is cardiac, we have to explain, we have to uh, elaborate the nature of chest pain. We know there is central chest pain with radiation to the neck or left upper limb or jaw, especially on exertion that is relieved at with rest or public wall nitrate. These are the features of cardiac chest pain. If the chest pain is localized to a particular area of the chest that indicates a local conditions like pneumonic consolidation, a pleurisy, or pleural or lung cancer. So chest pain is an important symptom, associated symptom. If there is no chest pain, that should also be mentioned. Leg swelling. Leg swelling, usually it is due to a congestive cardiac failure. And if there is leg swelling and history is suggestive of uh, <coughs> cardiac previous cardiac disease or hypertension or vascular heart disease. The diagnosis may be obvious as congestive cardiac failure. One important point is in the putam is hemoptysis. Whether there is hemoptysis or not, that should be specifically asked. And if hemoptysis is not present, the absence of hemoptysis is also an important information and it needs to be mentioned with proper emphasis. Presence or absence, both of hemoptysis, both are important information. After the present illness, history of present illness, we look for past illness. Past illness in favor of bronchial asthma is if there is childhood attack of bronchial asthma and eczema, presence of any allergy, these are important. Past history of pulmonary tuberculosis or migratory joint pain. Migratory joint pain may suggest the rheumatic heart disease, rheumatic fever in the childhood, and that may lead to valvular heart disease in uh, adult disease. One important disease is COVID-19. And this COVID-19 disease condition is not mentioned in any of our book yet, as this is a new disease. But with the last six months experience, we have found that many of the patients who uh, recovered from COVID-19 conditions may develop breathlessness in later period after recovery. So this is a new conditions, a new information to be included in our history in all cases of breathlessness. Other important disease conditions in past illness include hypertension, diabetes mellitus, ischemic heart disease, gastroesophageal reflux disease, stroke. These conditions should be uh, 
looked for, especially in elderly people. Any history of surgery, hospitalization, uh, important. Prolonged immobilization or malignancy. These points may be important when we consider pulmonary hypertension or pulmonary thromboembolic disease in our differential diagnosis. In that case, this history may be significant. Family history, you know, bronchial asthma, eczema, allergic conditions, pulmonary tuberculosis, there may be family history. Also hypertension, diabetes, ischemic heart disease, so these are also uh, present in the other, in other family members. In the personal history, very important is smoking, and it should be expressed in pack here. We know taking 20 sticks per day for one year makes one pack here. So if any patient takes 10 sticks per day for six years, that means the patient smoke for three pack years. So the taking of six per day and duration is to make the pack year. The smoking is strongly related to chronic bronchitis, bronchogenic carcinoma, ischemic heart disease or myocardial infarction. So history of smoking is important. History of ingestion of alcohol is also important in some cases and in some occupations. So uh, why it is relevant, we will look for occupation. Occupation is important for bronchial asthma and interstitial lung disease. Exposure to dust, exposure to chemicals, animal or bird fun may lead to interstitial lung disease. Any pets, presence of any pets like cat, dog, pigeon, a constant exposure as contact, it may be a reason for acute exacerbation of chronic breathlessness, or it may lead to infestation lung disease like encephalitis and varietes and so on. So this, in case of uh, breathlessness, this history also is important. Drug, drug history is important for two reasons. One is the drug used for the treatment of infectiousness like inhaler, if the patient can mention, in that case, inhaler, types of inhaler, oral bronchodilators, use of uh, steroids. These are important for purpose of treatment. Sometimes aspirin, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, may precipitate attack of bronchial asthma in aspirin-sensitive cases. Sometimes non steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, as it is a salt retaining, salt and water retaining drug, so it may precipitate congestive cardiac failure as well. Methotrexate, immutrium, illicit drug, these are the drugs sometimes taken for a long time in conditions like rheumatoid arthritis or different cardiac arrhythmias. They may produce lung fibrosis and which may be the underlying reason for chronic breathlessness. Diuretics, use of diuretics by the patient or nitrates by the patient suggest uh, underlying cardiac disease. So drug history is very much important for patient of chronic breathlessness. Other history, there are other components of history which we are uh, classically in all cases, like immunization history. Immunization history in patients with chronic uh, breathlessness, there may be history of taking pneumococcal vaccine, annual pneumococcal vaccine, or routine vaccination history in childhood or hepatitis vaccines. It may be uh, helpful in some cases. You know, menstrual history is important in. Uh, female patients, and we must not forget to take this history in uh, female patients. So, these are the history, and from the chief complaint, we made 
the first list of our differential diagnosis and after taking the history of present illness the information that we gathered from this history of present illness we have to reshuffle our list of differential diagnosis some conditions will be upgraded to the above part of the list and some may be downgraded to the lower part of the list and with this reshuffled and reviewed the list we will go for our physical examination physical examination it includes general examination and systemic examination there is a common format known to everybody that includes the points to be considered in general examination there is a long list and in systemic examination each and every system there is details of points to be examined during systemic examination but from the history and uh, chief complaint and history we must formulate some points that points should be looked for carefully special emphasis for our differential diagnosis some example is here in case of chronic breathlessness appearance is important patient may be anxious definitely and dyspneic and the patient's face may be lethargic in bronchial uh, carcinoma if the patient presents with superior vena cava syndrome that may be obvious from the very first sight if the patient is very much cachectic the cachectic patients uh, uh, give rise to the suspicion of uh, tuberculosis or uh, malignant condition decubitus if the patient is in proper position that indicates the patient has some difficulties in breathing and maybe it may be bronchial asthma COPD or cardiac failure and so on the level of consciousness is important we know the chronic obstructive pulmonary disease may or acute exacerbation of bronchial asthma may lead to respiratory failure and confusion and altered, altered consciousness is a feature of respiratory failure so level of consciousness is also important accessory muscles of respiration prominence of accessory muscles of respiration it indicates the severity of breathing severe if the breathing is severe then accessory muscles of respiration are very much prominent one thing we forgot to mention in our history taking is the severity of respiration severity of respiration should also be elicited during history taking how we can uh, assess the severity in history taking if the patient can talk in complete sentence the severity is mild if the patient talks in monosyllabic phase one word after one word then the severity is moderate if the patient cannot complete a sentence without taking breathing in between the severity is, is more there is a medical research council score of severity and that indicates that it goes for the patient is this thing a uh, disney uh, cat test or disney with mild exertion or disney with severe exertion or disney with more than severe exertion accordingly this grading of uh, severity of breathlessness is described in a uh, medical research council criteria if possible we can describe the severity of uh, breathing according to this our description other points in general examination anemia 
if anemia is marked, it indicates it may indicate any chronic disease or underlying malignancy or tuberculosis or any other chronic conditions. And that may be the sole reason of resistance in some cases. A polycythemia, uh, if the conjunctiva is suffused, it is uh, in contrast to uh, pallor that indicates underlying polycythemia and that may be due to underlying COPD or bronchial asthma. Cyanosis it may indicate respiratory failure and underlying polycythemia as well. Clubbing is important in respiratory conditions, also in some cardiac conditions as well. To you know if there is presence of clubbing and there is superior obstruction, the underlying diagnosis of uh, bronchial carcinoma is very much obvious. In other conditions like bronchitis or lung abscess, some interstitial lung disease also present with clubbing. Nicotine stain. Nicotine stain is the staining due to smoking on the index finger. It indicates the habit of heavy smoking and the smoking related to these conditions uh, should be in consideration in that case. Other important points here is presence of edema, jugular venous pressure, raised jugular venous pressure. These indicate congestive cardiac failure. Pulse may reveal if there is any uh, high volume pulse. High volume pulse indicates hypercapnia of respiratory failure or thyrotoxicosis. Thyrotoxicosis uh, induced cardiac failure may be a cause of dyspnea and pulse also reveal that any arrhythmia if there is atrial fibrillation or a marked bradycardia. Blood pressure hypertension is important. Hypertension may be a cause of congestive cardiac failure. Presence of high temperature indicates fever and signifies the underlying cause of fever. Respiratory rate is important. If respiratory rate is more than 30 breaths per minute, it indicates significant pulmonary compromise of pulmonary function. These are few of the list. Uh, these are not inclusive. Uh, lymph node examination. If there is any underlying malignancy or tuberculosis, there may be lymphadenopathy. Or if the thyroid disease is underlying cause, the thyroid gland may be enlarged. Uh, as I have mentioned, the, all the points in general examination are important. I have mentioned some of the four points in general examination which are more relevant for respiratory system disease. But we must not forget that all the points in general examination may sometime be important for a particular patient. Systemic examination. Systemic examination. Uh, as the chief complaint is balances in our patients, we should start with the examination of the respiratory system and then cardiovascular system and other systems later on. Respiratory system, cardiovascular system, elementary system. Respiratory system examination, this is a, there is a prototype of examination and a prototype of sequence of examination in cardiovascular system also like that. I think this part of uh, history taking and physical examination, these are not much difficult and we should master this skill by repeated practice and a practice. If we can make a make an appropriate list of differential diagnosis from history and 
general examination we may expect what the finding we look for in systemic examination if our diagnosis is bronchial asthma we know what are the findings to be look for in systemic examination if it is COPD, we know what should be the pain. In there is bronchial carcinoma or pleural effusion, the findings are uh, expected, can be expected from the very beginning of examination. As for example, in case of COPD, you know, the chest shape of the chest is barrel shaped, the movement is symmetrical but reduced, there may be presence of tracheal tag in a patient. The apex beat may be impalpable due to hyperinflation of the lung and the vocal parameters is symmetrical but may be reduced on both sides in if we uh, go for chest expansion and chest movement, that is reduced bilateral symmetrical. On percussion, percussion may be normal or there may be hyper resonance on both sides. And upper border of liver dullness may be downwards, and cardiac dullness, area of cardiac dullness may be reduced or obliterated. On auscultation, first of all, we have to look for wave sound. Wave sounds may be normal or prolonged expression or diminished. There may be bronchi, few bronchi, or some repetitions, or the vocal resonance is normal. You know the typical findings of each condition. So we will, if from our differential diagnosis, according to our diagnosis, we will give emphasis to a particular part of examination. If plural effusion is in our list, in that case, we must look for if there is any shifting of the trachea, if the fixed speed is shifted or not, if the vocal parameters is reduced, if the percussion note is dull or not, and whether the breath sound is diminished or absent in, in one side or not. So from the differential diagnosis, we look for the particular points in our systemic examination. If our suspicion is congestive cardiac failure, from the general examination, we may find raised JPP or there is edema, there may be high blood pressure or pulse may be irregular. These may indicate uh, presence of congestive cardiac failure. And if it is supported by the presence of chest pain of cardiac type in history, we may expect some findings in our cardiovascular system. In cardiovascular system, after pulse, blood pressure, JPP, we will go for precordial examination. In the precordial examinations, apex weight may give some clue if the apex weight is in its position, the tapping in the chest, it may indicate the presence of mitral stenosis, and there may be a diastolic train or meet diastolic uh, in the mitral area. If the, there is uh, aortic valvular disease, we uh, will look for the ejection systolic marrow in the aortic area and uh, relevant uh, findings like presence of trade or not or the apex beat may be shifted, which may be in thrusting or 
shaping of character. These are few examples of the findings we may expect in our systemic examinations and which findings we are going to look for, it should be decided from the history and general examinations. Accordingly, elementary system, if the, the diagnosis, suspected diagnosis consists of cardiac failure, we look for enlarged tender liver or presence of ascites in the elementary system examination. Uh, uh, in other systems, other systems may also be relevant in individual patients and uh, in individual patients, which systems may need to be examined further should be decided also. Uh, as for example, we may say, if there is hypertension and hypertensive cardiac failure, we may look for a renal lump or a renal fluid. If there, there is suspicion of thyrotoxicosis, we'll examine the nervous system as well. So this is a vast idea to discuss. And I, am, I have given some examples of examination of uh, system, different system with relevance of the findings according to the history and general examination. So after systemic examination, when the systemic examination is complete, now we have many informations, some from chief complaint, some from history of present illness, some other from some from the history of present illness and other history some findings from general examination and some from system examination. At this stage, the diagnosis should be almost obvious to us. And in accordance with these findings, we will select one diagnosis as our provisional diagnosis. Uh, as for example, it may be the bronchial asthma with acute infective exacerbation. A uh, patient might have a history of uh, bedlessness with episodic attack triggered by allergens with exacerbation and remission with symptom-free period and so on. And patient may have acute exacerbation with fever and cough for seven days. And with this, recent exacerbation, you may get admitted into hospital. In that setting, our diagnosis will be bronchial asthma with acute infective exacerbation. Other differential diagnosis we may consider may be COPD, congestive heart failure. These are few examples. These are not relevant in all cases. If the history is typical, then congestive heart failure uh, plural efficient may not be there. But if the history is not clean cut, in that case, uh, COPD may be a differential diagnosis. If the patient has breathlessness with history or past history of hypertension or myocardial infarction, history of taking nitrates or diuretics, uh, the breathlessness not relieved uh, significantly with bronchodilators and physical findings showing edema raised JPP and less tender liver. These may suggest congestive heart failure. So from the history and physical findings, we will uh, make a list of points in favor of our diagnosis. And any if there is any other points that goes against the diagnosis, of congestive cardiac failure, that should also be listed, like presence of uh, trigger factors, uh, symptom-free period in between attack, family history of bronchial asthma, and there is absence of any 
hypertension or precordial pain may go in against the diagnosis of congestive heart failure. Similarly, fifth points in favor of pro efficient, points against pro efficient, points in favor of interstitial lung disease, points against interstitial lung disease. These, according to these uh, format, we will uh, arrange our findings from the history and physical findings. And our investigation, plan of investigation will be made, prepared according to our this uh, list. These are the examples of conditions where we may get clue from the history and physical pain. This is obstructive air disease. Tobacco use, cough, relief with bronchodilator, increased spectrum production. Uh, these are features of obstructive air disease. If there is pleuritic chest pain and dyspnea not appropriate oxygen or bronchodilator, there is decreased breath sound, chest morphology, and pleural rub or basal dullness may indicate pleural effusion. Sometimes fatigue, pleuritic chest pain, wheezing, lower extremity soiling, pleural rub, prominent P2, murmur, right ventricular fib, uh, a distended regular pain, it may indicate pulmonary hypertension and chronic pulmonary embolism. And with the findings in the history and physical education, our diagnostic study should be selected. Similarly, in cardiac cases, if there is atrial fibrillation, there, there may be palpitation if you have syncopal attack, it is irregular, it causes. Uh, we will go for the infestation like ECG or alter monitoring like that. If there is aortic stenosis, uh, there may be dyspnea exertion, there may be murmur and jugular canal distension. And if any other valvular disease we consider, we will go for echocardiography for confirmation. Uh, these are the these are uh, the example how we select our investigation. If the findings doesn't history in the history or in the physical findings doesn't correlate with each other. And even if the patient dyspnea, breathlessness uh, may not aggravate after exertion, that is a strong point against organic causes of breathlessness. Breathlessness without exacerbation or aggravation after exertion is a point in favor of psychological cause. And that should be considered at the end of all the other causes of breathlessness. So after this uh, differential diagnosis, uh, points in favor and points against, or you will go for investigation. Definitely guided by the clinical features and uh, physical findings. Common investigations done in these cases are complete blood count, such as post-entry review, pyrometry, ECG, echocardiography, HRCT, bronchoscopy, or fluid study. These are few common investigations done. But we must uh, be able to interpret the findings in our investigation. Complete blood count, how it is going to help us if the count is, total count is very high with neutrophilic lymphocytosis may indicate an infective condition. If hemoglobin is low and high ESR, that may indicate tuberculosis or malignancy, even some collagen vasculitis may be there, especially if ESR is more than 100 millimeters in the first hour, it indicates tuberculosis or malignancy. Extra chest posterior interview 
is a very important investigation for breathlessness. It indicates many of the conditions like pleural effusion, pneumonia, uh, hyperinflated uh, lung in case of uh, COPD or acute attack of bronchial asthma. The pneumothorax may be uh, diagnosed by X-ray chest and uh, bronchogenic carcinoma. These are also repeat here. Some cardiac causes may also be repeat from chest X-ray PFU, like uh, like uh, globular heart in pericardial effusion, cardiomegaly in multiple cellular disease or cardiomyopathy, like that. Aspirometry is important for respiratory conditions to differentiate restrictive uh, lung conditions from obstructive lung conditions. We uh, should be able to interpret the aspirometric find FEV1 by FEC ratio is important. It is altered in chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. And in restrictive conditions, both FEV1 and FEC are reduced, but the ratio remains altered. Peak expiratory flow rate is measured by a simple peak flow meter. That may indicate the severity of obstruction. Electrocardiogram is important to know for diagnosing ischemic heart disease uh, like myocardial infarction or arrhythmia, like that. Echocardiography may help us to indicate the ventricular functions by ventricular uh, <coughs> functions or any, if there is any valvular heart disease that can also be diagnosed by echocardiography. Sometimes high resolution CT scan is of the chest is necessary to detect interstitial lung disease or bronchial cases. Bronchoscopy in some selected cases of bronchial obstruction or bronchial mustation. Plural fluid, if there is plural diffusion, plural fluid study is necessary. It may help us in diagnosing tuberculous plural diffusion or malignant plural diffusion or paranemonic plural diffusion or efficient due to collagen disease or uh, transitative, different transitative causes of fusion. So these are the examples of investigations. We should not do all investigations in all cases. It should be individualized, individualized according to our features, suggested, suggested features in the uh, history and in, uh, physical examination. Those features may suggest the relevant investigations to be done. Once the investigation reports are there, most likely we made a final diagnosis of our case. And the management of the patient. Management is not the difficult part of any case as the Management plan is uh, clearly noted in books. And if the diagnosis is known, if the di complete diagnosis should be noted, the primary diagnosis, if there is any associated uh, complications or any other associated diagnosis, we should give emphasis to all these conditions and our management should be guided accordingly. It may take the part of general management like nutrition, rest, fluid, salt, intake, and so on. And pharmacologic management, it, uh, both for symptomatic purposes and for specific purposes. Like if there is tuberculosis, we should prescribe anti-tuberculous drug along with pyridoxy. And if there is associated breathlessness around, we may need some bronchodilators, or if there is fever or chest pain, we may need antibiotics as well. 
én köszabom kell ez van, you know, there is step care management, is a limit. Inhalers are the main step of treatment for uh, symptom, uh, symptomatic management, salbutamol or other bronchodilator, short acting bronchodilator inhaler, SOS, and for the treatment of the chronic inflammation of the respiratory airways, steroid inhaler, steroid with uh, long acting bronchodilators combination, it may be prescribed for continuous and regular use. These are some examples of pharmacological intervention. Management of comorbidities and complications, we must not forget if diabetes manager or hypertension, uh, we must uh, treat those conditions and we should not forget to mention that comorbid conditions along with our provisional diagnosis or final diagnosis. A, if there is hypertension or diabetes mellitus, we must mention bronchial asthma with acute infective exacerbation, with the diabetes mellitus, with hypertension. We must not forget to, even if there is scabby, we should mention it along with our primary diagnosis. And we have to add the treatment of scabby along with the treatment of, the, of our primary condition. So, with this uh, discussion, I think we uh, may be able to uh, approach a case of chronic breathlessness up to its diagnosis. It is important uh, for examination purposes as long case, but it is more important in our practical life to make a specific diagnosis of a patient presenting with chronic breathlessness. I think is this discussion will come to some help to all of you who are participating uh, this discussion. And that's our uh, presentation is complete. Thank you all for your patient sharing. And thank you all again. Such mother say. Ha, should watch it. The fullest problem. GG, the presentation is complete. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm